In order to validate her home observations, Ainsworth developed a standardized laboratory procedure that has become an important tool in the study of children between ages of about 10 months and 5 or 6 years. It is called the strange situation because, in fact, it is just that for the baby or young child. The child and the caregiver enter a room that has lots of toys and some chairs. The caregiver puts the child on the floor to explore. After about three minutes, an adult stranger comes in. Hello. Hi. Dr. Fidithides, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. This is Caroline. Hello, Caroline. Sits down and briefly chats with the caregiver. How was uh, your trip here? It was fine. We had no trouble no finding trouble. it. Did you play? And then begins to play with the child. Oh, and it's your corn. And it's a beautiful day. It's, it is a gorgeous day. Caroline didn't want to come inside. I don't blame her. <laughs> Going to throw that? Yes, keep it to it. Oh, hmm? It's coming back to you. Oh, you kicked it. Can I kick it? Oh, he wants ice cream. Or you want ice cream. <laughs> caregiver then leaves and the stranger interacts with the baby. The caregiver signals her return and enters. Reunites with the baby and interacts with the baby while the stranger leaves. Are you making a sign for mama's milk? Yeah. Yeah, it's not time for that right now. But we can play with some toys. <gasps> Let's play with some toys. Do you see a big dinosaur? And do you see a tiger? Let's see if we can find a tiger.
After a few minutes, the caregiver again leaves. Okay, Caroline. Mommy's gonna go bye bye. Mommy's gonna go bye bye. I'll be right back. This time, the baby is alone. The stranger comes back in and tries to interact with the baby, trying to soothe her if she's upset. Finally, the caregiver returns. We have speeded up this procedure for this video. It normally lasts 21 minutes. Okay. Ainsworth found several intriguing patterns. First, babies who cried the least at home, whose attachments with their mothers were secure, often cried more than other babies in the separations in the lab. They reacted to the loss of their haven of safety in this strange setting by becoming visibly upset. Interestingly, it wasn't the baby's behavior at separation that was the most important. It was the baby's behavior on reunion that was the most telling part of this experience. Babies securely attached to their mothers, like the one you just saw, tended to go to their mothers to be picked up. They were quickly soothed and then returned to happy exploration. Ainsworth found that 66% of the Baltimore pairs had these secure attachments. She also found two categories of anxious or insecure attachments, which we here illustrate with animations of actual lab footage to protect privacy. Some babies were less obviously upset by the separation and at reunion were slow to initiate contact with their caregivers. In Ainsworth's study, 21% of the pairs were in this avoidant category of attachment. Another category of babies, labeled as having insecure, ambivalent, resistant attachments, did less initial exploration and were obviously highly distressed by the separations. It was very difficult for their mothers to calm them on reunion, and the babies tended to show ambivalent behaviors such as kicking and arching their backs. These made up 13% of the original sample. Several years later, after studying many strange situations, Judith Solomon and Mary Main, a former student of Ainsworth's, identified a fourth category called disorganized. These babies were utterly overwhelmed by the experience. Some seemed momentarily terrified by their parents' reentry. Others approached and then retreated with a dazed expression, unable to make an organized response to their distress. Further research by Maine and others has shown that most children with this disorganized pattern have been raised in families who have suffered some significant loss, trauma, or maltreatment. For all these babies, whatever category, the strange situation triggered attachment behaviors they had developed in their first months of life. The patterns have proven to be quite stable over time and to color future interpersonal relationships.